To start, I want you all today to think about a case study student while you participate in this seminar. Our goal is at the end of this seminar, you will have completed a differential diagnosis as to the nature of your case study student's word finding error patterns. Now this student may be a student who you know has word finding difficulties. That is, the student has already gone through a formal diagnostic assessment, maybe even administered the TWF-3, and is shown to have word finding difficulties on this test. Or it might be a learner who you think has word finding difficulties, but you're not sure. And you would like to be able to clarify his or her language during this seminar. In either case, choose a learner who you think could serve as your case study student and put their initials in the upper right hand corner of your notes. My case study student for today is Katie, and you're going to meet her later on in our seminar but I'd also like you to put your initials in the upper left-hand corner because I would like you to entertain a self-study of your own word-finding skills as we proceed. These are the domains we need to assess in order to differentiate learners' word-finding error patterns. For example, we need to know whether the learner we're concerned about comprehends the words they're unable to retrieve. We also want to know whether they can repeat the words they are unable to retrieve. If a learner does not comprehend the word, then that wouldn't be a word finding difficulty. That would be a receptive language or comprehension difficulty. Since by definition, word finding difficulties is a discrepancy between comprehending a word but not being able to retrieve that same word. Similarly, we expect learners to be able to repeat words that they're not able to retrieve. If a learner is not able to repeat a word, then the assumption is that learner has articulation difficulties. But if a learner is able to repeat a word yet still cannot retrieve it, that discrepancy suggests a word-finding difficulty.